Welcome to another edition of Math Snacks with Miss Glovely and Miss Wonderful. Miss Glovely, multiplying two digit numbers can be really, really difficult. It can. Sometimes I'm not sure exactly how to line up the numbers when I do that type of problem. Yeah, and there's different ways of solving that, but I think if we go, sometimes I think it helps us if we think about this system where we're going from a concrete representation and move from concrete to what's it look like pictorially and then going to the abstract. I think so many times we move to that abstract way too fast. I agree. So let's try to take this, this two-digit multiplication and let's try to take it from the concrete to a pictorial to an abstract representation. You okay. game? I'm game. Okay. All right, let's start with a problem that looks like this. And if I were to represent that... With 12 groups of 15, right? Right. Okay. But I'm going to use base 10 blocks. And there is a 10 rod and two unit cubes. And so here I'm going to multiply that by 15. So there's 10. This looks a lot like an array that you're setting up here. Hmm, you think? And there's 15. So if I were going to fill this space in with as few of my base 10 blocks as possible, a flat would fit here because 10 times 10 is 100. That's taking care of this hundred, that part of it? Uh-huh. Okay. And then if I take 10 times 1, a 10 rod would fit here and fill that space. And I would need another one for that one. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply this 10 times this one. So I'm going to, again, fill with 10s because I want to use as few of these pieces as I possibly can. So I'm going to fill in all five of these ones, because 1 times 10 is 10. And then I've got this last little space where I'm multiplying the one unit cubes times each other. So each of these could be filled. Can't use those 10 rods anymore there, can nope, you? No, they're too long. So I'm going to fill in with, it's kind of... Your gloves kind of giving you some problems there, Miss Glovely. Not my gloves as much as just everything wants to shift on me. Mm. And I, have I hate to, that when that happens. Uh, I know, but I have to wear my gloves, you know. They, know. they help me remember that grandmother of mine. I know. I um, think that's so cool, too. Okay, so we're missing a couple here. It's not going to look quite even, this wonderful, because they're shifting. But oh, we need we're ten, here. Yeah. Let me move them down. You move them down there you. and push that way. I'll help you here. You need an extra set of hands. I do. Okay. And there's now the whole entire area is filled in. So 12 by 15 is 100, mm -hmm. and 10, 20, 20 30, 30, 40, 40 50, 50, 60, 70. 170. And 10 more, oops, 10 more. 180. 180. So that's what it looks like in the concrete example. And it is an array. I mean, I notice you've set up an array, but it also can be thought of as 12 groups of 15, because I have 15 in each line. So yes. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Groups of 15. 12 groups of 15. Yes, you do. So when I do it concretely, I'm thinking, what's my biggest area I can, which would be my 10 times 10. Mm -hmm. And then I go to my 10s and fill in as much as I, as many, as much as I can there. Right. And then I fill up my little ones with the little 10s. Exactly. Okay, let's move that off without making a mess of it. No. Oh, okay, good luck with yeah. that. Yeah. And let's see if we can move that. That was that concrete representation. Let's see what it looks like pictorially. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to use some graph paper. All right. And if I'm going to do 12 by 15, I'm going to want to go down by 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Whoop, just enough. Shoo. By 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Are you double checking? Uh -huh. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. And fill, that all fill in. this in. Now, if I kind of tried to do what you did, I'm going to 
Actually, I probably ought to turn it the other direction because you were kind of going this way. Yes, I was. You did 12 by 15. So, if, you, if I were to count them all... It would take a while. It would take me a while. Because there were 180, right? But I know this is a 10 because I had 12. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, and I know that's a 10. So if you make that hundreds block... I, shoo, that took, shoo. A, that took a lot less time to count that hundred. It did. And then I know I have two, and because I know that's times a 10 already here, I know that's a 20. Yes. And then I know because this was 10 and this was 5, I had 10 times 5. I know this is another 50. There you go. So I have 120, 150, no, and then 170, 170 there you plus go. these 10 more Unifix, or 10 more grid paper. Yes. Okay? All right. So let's now think about how those, I can kind of see a connection. Can we slide that back on? Sure. I can definitely see a connection between the concrete and the pictorial, which by the way, in everyday mathematics and other things, they call this finding partial products. Well, wow. So we're going to now look at it in the partial products, the abstract representation of that. Okay. Okay, so abstractly, what that might look like would be, what did we say it was 12 times 15 was the and, original problem. And when I did when I did that with the concrete, I broke that into a 10 and a 2. Okay, so I'm going to break this into a 10 plus a 2 to get my 12. Okay, and on the 15, I broke it into a 10 and a 5. Okay. Cool. And because... This looks like my algebra stuff. Tell more about your algebra stuff. Well, in algebra, when we have a problem like this, we use the FOIL method to solve it. And what we do is we actually do the multiplication of the first terms that are in the parentheses. So I would do the 10 times 10 like we did here with the concrete. Okay, so let me try doing that, what you're saying. So in the FOIL method, I'm just going to lay that to the side. Okay. You said to multiply my two outside terms together. Nope, first terms. My two first terms. So F as in first. First one here and first one here, okay. so 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 gives me 100, and I'm going to put that's F. Okay, and that's exactly what we did here when we took this 10 times this 10 and got 100. Show me again. We took this 10, 10 times, times this 10, 10 and got 100. Okay, and in the pictorial representation, it was this 10 and this 10 to get the 100. Right. So that's the F. That's right, the F. F on there. Okay. Foil. The next one, the O in FOIL stands for outside terms, and the 10 and the 5 are the outside terms. So I'm going to take 10 times 5 to get the 50, and where is that in your concrete representation? That would be the 10 here times these 5 here. So it would be this these, group? It would be this group right here. Okay. Pictorially, here was the 10 times 5, this is the O in FOIL. And then we move to the I. Which is our inside terms. The 2 and the 10 are inside. 2 times 10 gets me 20. Mm -hmm. So concretely? Would be my 10 times my 2, which are my 20. Okay. And you see it on here? I do. All right, here's the I in the FOIL method. And... The L stands for last terms, which would be my 2 and my 5. So I take 2 times my 5 to get the 10. And on my concrete, that would be 2 times 5, which is my 10. Okay. And in the picture, here's my 2 times my 5, so here's the L. So Yay. there is the FOIL method. So we really don't need to wait till Algebra 1 to be teaching FOIL. <laughs> no, in fact it makes a lot of sense for us to see why 12 times 15. I mean we can think of it as 12 groups of 15 and we can multiply it in other ways but it's really a, a good way to get us ready for algebra by doing that FOIL method early on. That's cool. Any other questions Miss Glovely? I think I've got it. I think I've got it too. For another episode of Math Snacks, thanks for joining us.